Hi everyone, how is everyone doing today? Can you let me know in the chat if you can see and hear me? I just want to make sure that everyone can see and hear me today before I get started. So just let me know if you can see and hear me. So I'm just going to wait a couple of moments to make sure everybody gets here and that everyone can see and hear me. So if you could let me know in the chat box if you can see and hear me, that's going to let me know that I can go ahead and get started. All right, so... Let's go ahead and get started today, and I'd love to know where you all are from. I know with a lot of people, I have people tune in from all over the world, right, sometimes for these different live trainings that I hold. Normally, I hold them on kind of like a webinar platform, but today, I thought what I would do is I am going to just kind of go ahead, dive in, Love to know where you're from today, right? And I was going to hold this on YouTube. I'm actually from Virginia. Love to hear where you all are from. So if you can let me know in the comments where you all are from and everything like that. And we'll be getting started in just a couple minutes and everything like that. All right? So if you didn't know already, this is actually a three-part series. So this is part one of a three-part live training series that I'm holding this month. All right, this first one that you're coming to attend, it's all about health profs and how to use the health profs platform to get clients and actually stand out from the other different profiles on the platform so that you can get clients consistently from the platform. All right, the second one is actually going to be about four different pillars that I think are super necessary to build a online nutrition business in the best scalable way that allows you to have more flexibility, that allows you to grow your business to six figures and really make a big impact. That's actually the first time I've ever held that one. And so I'm going to be posting the link so that you can sign up and register for that one on my Instagram, probably tomorrow. If you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure that you do. That's at Natalie Santa Rosa. If you just look me up on Instagram, I'm the only one that name, right? So the third one is the Instagram training. I've held that one, I think, twice before, and it's super, super popular. So I'm going to be holding that one again, all right? And so I'm super excited to do that as well. Be sure, if you haven't already, to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm putting out a new video tomorrow about my 2020 growth strategy for using Instagram for your online nutrition business and how I recommend to use it so that you can really, really grow on the platform and make sure that you're getting clients consistently from that as well. This training is going to be really great today. I'm super excited for it because I'm going to be giving you very actionable steps. You can apply these today. It's not going to be a bunch of fluff and you can start seeing really, really great results. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kind of dive in then today. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is how to make yourself searchable and to stop being general. So a lot of people don't use the platform from, you know, a client perspective, which is understandable because we're health professionals and you want to use, you always just think of it from your point of view instead of their point of view. But today what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how they see it from their point of view so that you can understand why sometimes people have a hard time finding you and why people don't stand out on the platform. So I've gone ahead and I've said it to nutritionists and dietitians. I'm just going to pick a big city. So I'm going to put New York City. And the first thing you'll notice from kind of the client perspective is that essentially here's how they can search is over here, right? We've got clinical dietitian, clinical nutritionist, all kinds of different options here. And then you can also 
look at these different kinds of treatment techniques is what they're called. Now, notice when I click on one of these, if people select all of them, what sometimes happens is that you don't stand out at all because what will happen if you only have one of these options selected is that you, <laughs> you'll pop up first, which is what we want to do. So let's say we select nutrition performance. What happens is someone, let's say they're looking for nutrition performance, the first person that pops up here is I enjoy working with clients with eating disorders, weight management needs, IBS, diabetes, and women's health issues. The problem with this is, is that if you were looking for someone for help for yourself and you were like, I really need a sports performance nutritionist or dietitian, this isn't going to speak to you. And I'm not trying to pick on this lady, right? I just wanted to use this. She's the first example that popped up here, right? I just wanted to use this as an example. And instead, what we want to think about is how we can select. Because let's, let's, let's click on her. We don't want to use every single option available because what happens is if you're trying to find someone for a specific thing, this is not helpful to that person. And if you don't already know my thoughts on why you should pick a niche, I'm going to put in the comment section after this essentially my video about why I recommend you pick a niche. But essentially, one of the biggest things here is that a lot of people generalize themselves so much. Imagine if you had a heart condition and you needed to see a doctor about it. You're not going to want, you're not going to prefer the general practitioner, even though he might be a great general practitioner, over someone who specializes in heart disease, right? And so what I really want Want you to think about here is from the perspective who are they going to choose first and that's why it's actually important to not use all of the options because this essentially generalizes you and to not make your profile general and as a secondary kind of point here that I wanted to bring up these first couple sentences here are important if you're looking for somebody with a specific specific thing. If we don't use these first two sentences wisely, essentially what happens is you just blend in with everybody else. Okay, so that kind of takes me to my next point that I wanted to talk about as well, is that we need to talk about the client journey and not your credentials. All right, this sounds very counterintuitive, but I want you to think about why people buy, okay? Why do people buy? Why do people choose to invest their money to work with a particular type of person? All right, if this is making sense so far, if you can let me know in the comments by saying, you know, I guess we'll just pick the worst niche because we just talked about niche. If you can comment niche in the comments, it's going to let me know that I know you can, uh, you're understanding everything I'm talking about and that everything's making sense so far before we move on, right? Okay, so why do people buy? People buy and people decide to invest because they're looking for a solution to their problem, which again builds off of the point that I was talking about having a niche and catering your profile around a specific niche and only choosing the different options that you have available when you're creating your profile for that specific niche, right? Now, going beyond that, I want to talk about a technique for writing your profile because this is where we actually want to talk about the client journey, not our credentials. So we don't want to talk about ourselves that much. That sounds strange. It's my bio. Why wouldn't I talk about myself? But hear me out. So I like to use a type of marketing called direct response copywriting. If you haven't heard of it already, essentially this builds upon one of the most famous kind of marketers and advertisers during the 1950s. His name is David Ogilvy, right? And essentially, the thing is, is what he developed is a way of salesmanship in print. 
He was originally a salesman himself, and his company, he, his sales were so much higher than the rest of the people in his company that essentially what they said is they said, hey, can you write a booklet for how you do what you do? And so he wrote that book. That book became so famous that he essentially, eventually made his own advertising and marketing agency. And so what I want to talk about today is this concept of direct response copywriting. And direct response copywriting is about knowing the client's language. It's about speaking to the client, not speaking about ourselves. And this is very effective because people actually want to know and feel that type of empathy rather than think that you have no clue, no clue what they are facing, right? And instead just talk about yourselves and different, you know, certifications you completed or anything like that. So, again, like I said here, right, all we can see is these first two sentences. So if we say something like, if we take up these sentences by saying, and again, you know, I'm not trying to pick on these people. I'm just trying to show you the difference between someone who's really, really using these two sentences effectively, right, rather than not using them effectively. But Eileen here, right, she says, I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, certified diabetes educator, certified leap therapist. We don't even know how she helps people. And that's how they look at this is, how can you help me? Right? And so if we're not using those first two sentences correctly, then what happens is we're essentially wasting them. There's such, this is the point of where the person clicks or they don't click. Right? And so these are probably the most critical two sentences you'll need to write whenever we're creating our profile. Right? So here's the format that I want you to use. This is what I like to call a client journey format, okay? And we're gonna keep this really simple and we're gonna talk about direct response, copywriting like I was saying, and we're gonna use this kind of format. Is C, D, P, and then C. And essentially what I mean by that is the first critical aspect that we wanna talk about in that first paragraph, right, in those first couple sentences, is we want to show that we empathize with them, that we understand what they're facing by talking about their current situation. An example of this might be, oh, you know, let's say you help with digestive health issues, okay? In that first, sentence or two, it would be great if you're like, if you are, you know, having trouble with bloating and digestive discomfort, and if you wake up in the morning and your stomach's flat, but then by the evening you feel yucky and, you know, you're having IBS symptoms or something like that, right? That's not well constructed, but you're getting my point is we either want to ask a question or we want to write a statement that shows that we really understand what they're facing with what's going on with their current situation, right? The problem they're facing. The second thing that we want to talk about on when we write our bio is the desired situation. Where do they want to be, right? And so what we do here is we talk about, like let's say somebody is looking to lose weight. We don't want to just say like, oh, you know, you'll lose weight, right? Because um, sometimes weight loss is more full encompassing, and this is the importance of doing really great niche research too, is understanding, oh, maybe they also want to feel fully confident, right? And they want to feel great about themselves. And so having another one to two sentences about where they want to be shows them, oh yeah, that is what I want, right? Now, here's the next part that is like a piece of magic, right? Is to position your authority. Sometimes what happens is 
People don't understand our perspective. Sometimes they're more of the dieting mentality, and so they come across your profile and they might not agree with your perspective. So something that's super critical here is that after we show them that we understand what they're currently facing, then we show them that we understand where they want to be, then the really, really great aspect is we can then position ourselves as an authority. An example of this is by saying, Maybe you've thought about trying the keto diet, and then you can say something like 90% of diets fail, and that's why I always recommend we develop a plan that's manageable for you, it's sustainable for you, and you don't have to cut out all the foods you love to get to X, Y, and Z. Doing something like that is so great because what happens is they see you as the ultimate authority for their problem. And this gets them even more hooked in and interested in getting to know you better and potentially working with you and things like that. All right, so if this is helpful for you right now, go ahead, put in the comments, put position your authority. I want to see that everybody start using this aspect because it's so great. It makes the biggest difference on the planet, I'm telling you. And then the last thing is to include at the very end, at your third paragraph, right, on your bio, is to include a call to action. So let's talk about that next. How can we do that? So one thing about a call to action is it's really, really great for helping you nurture new prospects. It's great for helping you increase your reach, right? And without one, we miss out on this amazing, amazing opportunity to do so, okay? So what do I mean by that, right? Let's say out of 100 people, 100 people visit your profile. There's only going to be one to maybe three, maximum five of those people that will automatically decide, I'm going to click that button, I'm going to book a call with, you know, Nancy, and I want to work with her straight away, right? Without this, what happens is that we miss out on 95% of people. So that's like 95 people that you don't even get to keep, right? Which is, it's very important for you to use a call to action where essentially what we can do is continue to nurture those people, take those people off of the Health Profs platform, continue to nurture them, follow up with them, and then eventually eventually get them as clients, right? Okay, so how do I recommend doing that? So here is my call to action example. We are getting that, we're using a call to action where essentially we're going to offer some form of piece of value-driven content piece. And this is what we call in marketing a lead magnet. You might have heard of it called a freebie. But essentially what this can be is either a video where you actually give people value and solve some of their problem and then also position yourself as an authority like I said below and then call them to actually schedule a call with you. It can also be a freebie where, let's say it's a PDF form, it can be a video form, it can be, you know, it can be many different things where essentially it's a piece of value for people. Now, how we get them off the health process platform is we use that third paragraph. And this is what I recommend you put in that third paragraph, is if you're struggling with niche, and this is where you fill in the blank, what is your niche? And so you put niche in that blank. Then I put together a, and then you put the name of your piece of value that you're offering that's designed to help you. And then you talk about what they want to achieve. And then you say, just send me an email at, and then you fill in your email with, and then you give them a word to put in the subject, in the subject. And that's all you put. What's so great about this, like let's give an example first off, okay, is if you're struggling with 
digestive issues, then I put together a free training video on how to manage your IBS that's designed to help you alleviate the symptoms you might be facing. And so all you need to do is email me at, and then you give your email, and with the word IBS video in the subject. What's also great about telling them to email you instead of giving a link is this lowers the resistance. People don't feel like they're opting in for anything. They are technically exchanging their email because they're emailing you and you can follow up with them, which is really, really great. But then what you can do with this is you can actually, you know, you're lowering the resistance. They don't feel like they're opting in and you can follow up with them. But what's also great about this is that it, it's, you know, it essentially just gets all those people off of the platform. We're not missing out on the opportunity to follow up with them. And that's why I really like this rather than just putting a link. So the fourth thing is let's say you write your bio and it's amazing and you've done great. Okay. What can then start to happen is you're getting too many people, or maybe that's where you are right now. You're getting a bunch of people actually emailing you and they want to work with you or calling you, but then you're starting to get a bunch of tire kickers and this can really take up a ton of time. So what we need to do is start attracting high quality, right? We need to start attracting high quality clients without all those tire kickers, without the people who are just in that information gathering stage and they're not ready to really move forward, right? Okay, so how do I recommend you do this? In the health profs profile, it recommends that you put your phone number. I don't recommend that you put your real phone number or you could potentially have your phone number ringing off the wall and we don't want that, especially as we get busier with our business. So instead, what I recommend is we need to open up a Google Voice number. Google Voice is completely free, right? We can set up a Google Voice number and then we can set up a voicemail message to collect those incoming leads. And this is the rec this is essentially what I recommend you put on the message. All right. So, on your voicemail, what you want to say is if you want to know more about potentially working together, then visit and this is why I recommend you have a schedule page. You all, you know, maybe this is www.nataliesantarosa/schedule where they can schedule a call with you or email me at and then put your email there as well. And what this does is it adds resistance. So we're trying to do two things. One, we're trying to either lower resistance, like I talked about earlier, to get people to nurture them, right? And they're not gonna be calling us because they're trying to get that piece, that lead magnet, right? Or what we're trying to do here and we're trying to increase resistance. So what happens is we're just getting people who are truly interested and we're not getting people who don't have that high level of interest, right? Okay. So last but not least, let's use all of Health Prof's features effectively to stand out. If you're still with me and everything's making sense and you're excited to start implementing these things, put stand out in the chat box. All right, put stand out. Okay, so let's talk about this. A lot of people blend in because they don't use all features of health profs to stand out essentially. So what are some of those different things? First of all, looking at the different profiles here. Let's click on, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's click on Eileen again. A lot of people, what they do over here, you see this, this website button. They allow you to put their your website, but a lot of people use that button. And essentially all they use that button for 
is they use that to just put their homepage website and I don't recommend doing that whatsoever because lots of people get lost on websites and then we don't get more people, we don't collect more clients and that's not ideal. So here's a couple ways that we can use this website link, right? So what can we put in that website link? Any kind of lead magnet. So if you have some sort of link where people have to opt in and they get a lead magnet, put the link to that page so that people will opt in, you'll get their email, you can continue to nurture those people, those people will eventually maybe become your client. All right, what's the second option? If you have a Facebook group, so if you started a Facebook group, it's built to, let's say it helps busy moms with picky eating kids, right? Then put the link to the Facebook group so that people join your Facebook group and then you can continue to nurture those leads there. The third thing we can do is a webinar or a training video or anything like that that you might have where essentially what you can do is have people again opt in. You can continue to nurture them. They get value. Maybe you have a call to action at the end for those people to schedule a call with you. Right, So it continues to offer value, then it continues to position yourself as an authority, then it continues to get you clients where not everybody at the very, very beginning is going to absolutely decide, hey, right now, right here, right now, I'm going to schedule and book a call with, you know, your name, right? So last thing is just a popular piece of content. Let's say you have a super popular blog on your website direct them to that blog, then be sure at the end to have a call to action at the end of the blog where you essentially say, you know, if this was helpful for you but you're still wanting to know how to completely, you know, and then put get to your desired situation but say it in their terms, right? Then click on this link, book a call with me, and we can discuss to see if we'd be good fit, right? Doing things like this, continue to nurture people, continues to bring you in new clients. Now, a highly <laughs> never utilized feature is the photos feature. Technically in your bio here, everyone, um, you can also add photos, essentially. Meaning on that page, right on your bio before you you type in all the text you can add photos nobody uses this feature and it floors me because the thing is is you need to be using it in one of two ways either a put testimonials because this builds trust it shows your authority it shows that people get results working with you it shows that people really like working with you and have a good experience working with you two the second thing we can do is we could also, put more information about our lead magnet, right? Maybe create some sort of like PDF cover where we talk about how the lead magnet can help them where they currently are and use that same direct response copywriting for format, right? Current situation where they might be, desired situation where they want to go, and then how that lead magnet can help them with those problems that they're facing. And I highly, highly recommend using this feature. No one uses this. And this is honestly the best way to stand out from everyone else and to really position yourself as the authority within your niche because nobody uses this. So use this feature, all right? Now, what did we talk about? I just wanna take a moment to summarize Go everything, go over everything that we talked about and so that you really have in your head how we're going to implement these things. Now, be sure to stick around to the very end, right? Because I'm going to do an open Q&A, which means you can ask me anything about how to apply these concepts to your Health Cross profile and I'll answer you and help you with that. All right? So first, 
off. We talked about how to make your bio searchable and to stop being general. People use those tabs. They want to search for a specific thing. When we don't make our bio specific, we essentially blend in with everybody else. And then who wants, you know, it doesn't, there's no differentiating, dif excuse me, everybody, differentiating factor. All right. And that's huge when we're trying to stand out from everyone else on the platform. So how do we do that? We pick a niche. We talk about that niche. We really, really work on those first two sentences. And we only select the options for our profile that actually pertain to our niche. Next thing, we don't talk about our credentials that much. Health Cross is a platform where you have to prove your credentials anyway. So there's no point in this part. What we need to do instead is actually use this feature and actually talk about the client journey and use direct response copywriting. All right, you've now learned about David Ogilvy. You know, you feel free to look him up. I personally love him. I have read some of his books. I use a lot of his techniques, technically my own marketing. All right, and essentially, what do we need to remember as an acronym? Okay, put that in the chat box. If you remember the acronym, put it in the chat box. What is that acronym? So it's C for current situation, D for desired situation, P for position, position yourself as an authority, and then C for call to action, which brings us then again to our third point. Always use a call to action because we need to continue to nurture people. Not everybody's going to book a call with us. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use a call to action to get them off of the platform. Then what do we need to do? We need to filter out the leads because we can't have our phone just ringing off the wall. So that's why we set up a Google Voice number and we filter those leads. So we make sure we are only attracting ideal clients that are ready to invest and want to work with us. And then finally, using all those features correctly, right? Use that website link. Don't just use it for your home page. Use it in a different way. Other thing that we can do is to use the photos feature. I have not seen anybody use this feature and it is such a critical way of getting more. All right, everybody. So now I am going to open it up for live Q&A, okay? And so I'm just gonna look through some of the questions and see what I can answer while we're still live. Everybody, see here. Okay, you want to, me to clarify, is there anything that you want me to go over again? Is there something that you want me to talk about, right? But it actually solves your ideal client's problem that they're facing. Next thing that it does is it really, really, really positions you as the authority of your niche. And then at the end, sometimes it has a call to action for people to potentially work with you, all right? And so that's what a lead magnet is. I like to do video lead magnets. I think they're far more personal. Uh, I teach my clients how to create video lead magnets, but you can definitely do an ebook or any kind of freebie or anything like that, right? That really helps people. So how do you share that you see people virtually or for your whole state? Okay, great question. All right, you do still have to put in your profile that you are where you're located. A great thing to do, I would highly recommend because if we look at, you know, I would put in the location, either put in the location next to your location is also the virtual part, or you can put it in your title, right? Or we can put it in that very first few sentences as well. And that's going to be the most ideal way of doing that, okay? 
Is there any other questions whatsoever about what I've talked about today or anything like that? Okay. So I'm going to wait just a little bit more and see if anybody thinks of any other questions. If we don't, right, this is going to be all for today. It was kind of a shorter training. Uh, be sure, right, to come to the two other trainings these, this month, right? Those are longer trainings. They're more in-depth because we're talking about more than just one platform, right? So it's going to be one that's about essentially how, you know, to build your business and scale it and structure it so that you can scale up to six figures a year without turning your business into a monster. I talk about the four different principles that I teach my own students and grow your impact that I think really helps them with their success. And then the last live training I'm going to be doing is the Instagram one that everyone comes to, right? I really love this one. I know you all really love this one. I have a ton of people come every single time, so I'm definitely going to do it again, right? But it is all about how to use the Instagram platform, everything from stories to content to your presentation to your bio to really get clients, right? Okay, so how do we get the free version of Google Voice? I only see a monthly subscription. Okay, great question. All right, so I am going to look it up right now for you all because I've signed up for one of these myself. So let's see here. I believe it's, so last time when I signed up for this is what you want to look for is the personal, personal profile and don't sign up with your business profile. When you sign up with your business profile, they make you pay for it. When you sign up for with like a Gmail account, standard Gmail account, you don't have to pay for it. So, so sign up with that one and that's going to be the best way to do it. All right. Any other questions at all? Come, you know, if you haven't subscribed, right, subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification bell. I'm putting out that video tomorrow, right, and you'll get first access to the 2020 growth strategy that I actually teach my clients with using Instagram, and I'm uploading that video tomorrow. Okay, so that's going to be really great, too. But thank you all for coming. I'm so excited that we have people tune in today for how to use health profs and everything. And yeah, use these, use these principles. Nobody does them. I promise you, you're going to stand out. What's really great, I've had some of my clients do it. Uh, Stephanie, one of my clients did it. And she had, <laughs> I'm not even joking, she put it up and the next day she got like three calls. So it's pretty incredible what the difference, it, it makes a huge, huge difference because you don't look like anybody else. You actually are talking to your ideal client that you want to work with and it really, really positions you as the authority for your niche. Okay, so if there's no other questions, then we're going to end this training here. I hope this training was valuable for you. And let me know if you want me to do more of these live trainings on YouTube, kind of these live stream parties, uh, or if you prefer more of the standard webinars that I was doing previously. All right? Thank you all. Have a great, great evening. Bye.